Will the housing market implode? On this video, I'm going to cover a new report released by Forbes magazine where they asked housing experts to give their forecast for the next five years, how investors are impacting the market, and what state and federal intervention, if any, is needed. Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? I'm Rob Wozner, a local realtor here in Southwest Florida. If this is your first time on my channel and you wanna know everything about eating, sleeping, working, playing, and the real estate market, this is the channel you need to subscribe to. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. And I have people from across the country and around the world reaching out to me every single day, and I absolutely love it. So if you're even thinking about making a move here to Southwest Florida, you need to take the first step. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, however you wanna get in touch with me. I have the systems and processes dialed down to make this transaction as smooth and easy as possible. I have your back when buying or selling property in Southwest Florida. All right, so the article states that the housing market appears to be operating without breaks. As home prices continue to climb, the median listing price shot up in March to a record high of $405,000, and that's according to Realtor.com. Something to keep in mind is that this is just the asking price, not the sold price. So remember that the asking price is not always the price the home actually sells at, so we'll have to wait on that figure. As more signs indicate the housing market is on a fast-paced upward trajectory, many are wondering, are we entering a housing bubble? And will the market crash, at least deflate, at some point in the near future? So to answer this question, they basically asked nearly a dozen housing experts what their forecast is for the housing market for the next five years. While most experts expect homebuyer demand to continue, there are some warning signs that home prices could falter amid rising inflation and geopolitical uncertainty. Are we headed into a housing bubble in the United States? Well, the Federal Reserve Bank in Dallas actually posted a research article about how we're actually seeing some early signs of a housing bubble brewing. What they said was through the sharp increase in home prices in itself does not indicate a bubble, the report said. There are other fundamental factors to consider, including shifts in disposable income, the cost or credit and access to it, supply disruptions, and raising labor and raw construction material costs are among the economic reasons for sustained real home price gains. However, according to the Fed, what causes the housing market to be unhinged from those fundamentals is when there is widespread belief that today's robust price increases will continue. If many buyers share this belief, purchases arising from a fear of missing out can drive up prices and heighten expectations of strong home price gains. They actually conclude in the report that there is no expectation that fallout from a housing correction would be comparable to the 2007-2009 crisis in terms of its magnitude. Household balance sheets appear to be in better shape and excessive borrowing doesn't appear to be fueling the housing market boom. They went on to say that market participants and regulators are better equipped with tools and early warning detectors to thwart such a crisis. So if you're sitting on the sidelines and hoping for a major downturn to snag a cheaper home, well, think again. Most housing experts are predicting the market will remain strong for a while, and there are some reasons why the real estate market will likely remain hot, according to all of these industry experts. The first reason that they're stating is millennial demand for housing is up, with Generation Z right behind. The number of potential home buyers is plentiful, with Americans who are either millennial age or younger making up half the U.S. population, or 166 million as of July of 2019. This is significant because first-time home buyers represent the largest share, 31% of people purchasing homes, according to the data released by the National Association of Realtors. And most first-time home buyers are younger than 40, which means the buyer pool is deep, a good indication that demand will remain strong, especially since housing inventory is at historical lows. So a lead economist at Sunday stated, we won't see a downturn because the housing market saw little increase in inventory for the past 10 years. In a few years, Generation Z will be turning 30. 
and more financially ready to become homeowners than millennials were at their age. This means that the demand for homes will be as high, if not higher, while inventory will still be behind in demand. All right, so let's take out this great chart put out by the National Association of Realtors that shows that the share of generations of Americans buying homes as of 2021. So as you can see, the largest percentage of homeowners were from the young Gen Y millennials, 31 to 34 years old, making up 23% of buyers. And the Gen Xers, which are ages 41 to 45 years old, are making up 24% of buyers. Also, young boomers ages 56 to 65 years old are making up 18% of home sales in 2021. All right, so the second reason why the housing market may remain strong is that supply cannot keep up with demand. The vice president of Reality Track stated the supply demand imbalance is the primary reason home prices have escalated so rapidly. And after not building nearly enough houses for the last decade, home builders will take several years to at least add enough new supply to balance the market. Here's a look at housing stats over the past 15 years. You can really see the discrepancy starting at around 2009, 2010. Also, when we look at the 2005, 2007 housing market, we had a ton of housing starts. You can see in 2006, we went from 2.1 million housing starts compared to 2009, where we had 540 housing starts. From there, you can see that housing prices started to go up, but then dipped when COVID hit. And right now we are at 1.7 million housing starts. Okay, so with a balanced market, the months of supply would be around four to six months. That's the amount of time it would take to deplete all the homes for sale at the current sales pace. But today's market in general has only 1.7 months of supply. Now this drastically favors the sellers. Now, if we look at the Naples, Florida market, which as most of you know, is where I sell uh, a lot of real estate, um, we are looking at 1.1 months of supply for the entire market. Now that includes condos, land, everything, 1.1 months of supply. And if you look back to 2021 in Naples, we had 3.1 months of supply. So we're still in a very strong seller's market right here in Southwest Florida. What that means for a seller is that you are in control. Sellers have control over prices because there's limited supply. So sellers are setting a price that they want for their home and they are usually getting it. So if you're thinking about selling a property here in Southwest Florida, you need to reach out to me today because it is the best time, it's probably the greatest time in history that you can command the highest price for your home. The report goes on to say that a hopeful sign that new home construction climbed at an annual rate of 6.8% in February, the fastest growth that we've seen since 2006 but they're nearly 1.8 new home starts are likely to put a dent in the home prices. Also, something to keep in mind is that all housing is not just single family homes. So if you look at just single family homes, there's only about 1.2 million uh, construction ones. So we are not seeing a large enough increase in single family builds to even put a dent in the housing supply shortage. Now to throw a curveball even more into this, um, home builders are facing historic price increases in costs. They're also hobbled by shortage of material supplies and labor that have been stalling construction projects and impeded the completion of projects. Potential buyers are hobbled by surging mortgage rates and prices that last year spiked into the sky. This is turning into a real problematic mix. It will take time to reduce the housing stock debt we have accumulated. The imbalance will continue to put upward pressure on housing prices, even if they moderate from the peak pace of growth in 2021. Construction costs of single family homes, excluding you know uh, land and other construction costs, spiked by 17% year over year. This is the third month in a row that we have seen spikes in construction costs. According to separate data from the Census Bureau, these were the worst spikes in the data going back since 1964, amid all kinds of shortages and delays, and with everyone being able to pass on higher prices. All right, so what the real estate industry won't tell you, uh, the industry is conveniently ignoring the other part of the supply equation, which is the number of houses sold. You see uh, on a video not that long ago, somebody made a comment that I wasn't covering uh, the impact of the iBuyer and the investors on the real estate market. So um, a number of houses for sale um, is equal to the number of houses put up for sale minus the number of houses sold. 
Very few houses have been pulled off the market unsold. The supply of houses for sale is so low today because investors bought up so many houses that they pulled down the supply of houses for sale. Mathematically, when investors buy more houses, fewer houses become available. All right, so we have to look at all of those massive iBuyer sites where you could just uh, you know put your home in the internet and they offer you this great price and you don't have to have any showings or anything and they just give you money. Um, a lot of people fell for that, especially during COVID. Um, and they did purchase a large amount of homes. Now, I'm talking about sites like Open Door, OfferPad, Zillow, and Redfin. Many people were surprised at the idea that Zillow will actually give you cash for your house, streamlining the process significantly. I'll then deal with the repairs and, and the quick renovations, and then they thought they could just sell the house itself. It's not only one of the business models either. Competing real estate site Redfin had a similar program, and there's an entire company dedicated to internet-based home buying, like Open Door. So what these companies were doing is they were trying to buy up as much real estate as possible as the housing prices started to explode across the country. Zillow bet big, telling investors that it planned to buy thousands of houses throughout 2021 and turn its home division into a billion dollar business. Zillow alone bought over $2.8 billion worth of houses. As the staggering hot summer came to an end though, it seemed like Zillow's offers business was also cooling down. In October, the company told investors that it would stop buying houses, citing construction, renovation, and closing labor shortages. Bloomberg, however, speculated that it could also be motivated by excess inventory and reported that Zillow seemed to sell a good number of those houses at a loss instead of a profit. So as, as I'm sure you probably read in the headlines, Zillow got crushed in this. They thought they could you know, flip houses and make a lot of money and that obviously did not work out well for them. Zillow is now having to look to offload over 7,000 of the homes it bought. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like individual house owners will be able to benefit from Zillow's troubles, however. Bloomberg reports that the company is trying to sell the homes to institutional investors, to would-be home buyers who would have turned down due to a seemingly endless supply of cash buyers. It may really seem like a slap in the face because they're selling to institutional buyers and they bought them right out from under normal people that are looking to buy homes. Until those vacant houses are listed for sale, they don't show up on the official supply uh, that realtors are looking at when people are looking for homes. And many of them may eventually end up on the rental market because they're being sold to institutional investors. Now to get back to Florida, according to the US Census Bureau, the state of Florida leads the nation with 1.68 million vacant homes. However, just because they aren't occupied doesn't mean they're not owned. The issue is that outside investors hold quite a share of the Florida housing market. According to Redfin investors, snatch up a record 18% of homes nationwide at the end of 2021. So we have people coming here inflating our market for purposes of holding it and making out as if it was like a stock and then they sell it at a higher profit because they have leverage and the equity right now that is built into the market because of the accelerating prices that keep the housing market going up and up. All right, so the number three reason why the experts are not predicting a housing crisis is that borrowers are less likely to default on their mortgages. Now, I totally agree with this since the lending standards are so much tighter now than they were in 2008, 2009, where you know, it was ridiculous, they had all those no-doc loans, uh, people could just put their name down on that application and they were getting qualified for mortgage. It was absolutely ridiculous. Essentially, that means that those approved for mortgage nowadays are less likely to default than those who were approved pre-crisis lending period. Now, I, I'm not a mortgage broker and I don't pretend to be one, but uh, as a realtor, it's very rare to come across a lender offering uh, the so-called no-doc loans that were so prevalent back in 2006, where the applicant doesn't have to provide any documentation of income, um, which was a really common practice before the housing market crash back then. Also, many loans backed by the government have a certain set of standards, like minimum credit scores, down payment requirements, and regulators now expect lenders to verify a borrower's ability to repay the loan among other standards. All right, there was also more than $1 trillion in new mortgage originations in the fourth quarter of 2021, with 67% of those mortgages going to buyers with credit scores exceeding 760. Now this score is considered very good according to FICO. So it's not all great news for the housing market. There are some warning signs that could dampen the housing market. There are murmurs of a recession on the horizon and we have inflation at its highest levels since the 1980s. In response to the inflation hike, the Federal Reserve has raised federal funds in March. The first federal, uh, federal rate hike 
in more than three years, which is a sign there could be a slowdown. While the federal fund rate does not directly impact long-term mortgage rates, it does have an effect on long-term rates like credit cards and adjustable rate mortgages. Higher interest rates could also trigger a slowdown in consumer spending. Goldman Sachs projects US GDP for the end of 2022 to expand by a mere 1.75%. Additionally, economists at Goldman Sachs Group estimate up to 35% chance that the economy will go into a recession, which would really impact the housing market. All right, another issue that's uh, gonna face the housing market is the Russia's war on Ukraine, which is not gonna help the economy with energy prices that were already increasing. Uh, we're gonna see those move higher and higher, and we're facing more upward pressure on the US and the Eurozone has banned Russian oil after its invasion of Ukraine. Higher energy prices will continue to fan the flames of inf inflation which along with higher interest rates could cause people to pull back on spending. And this means consumers could lose some appetite for home buying as well. Consumer confidence has dropped to a 10 year low in March. According to the University of Michigan's latest customer sentiment index, the index fell 30% to 59.4 in March compared to last year. The survey showed that respondents were anxious about how Russia's invasion of Ukraine could impact the US economy, as well as high inflation, and oil price jumps. The ripple effect of the US oil embargo on Russia can lead to even more problems with supply chain issues, which will contribute to already heightened inflation. As costs of goods increase, consumers tend to be less comfortable making big purchases like buying a home. Geopolitical conflicts seem to be the wild card and the one that could have further impacts on inflation, which is likely to persist longer than initially expected. As a result, the Federal Reserve is expected to start removing its accommodating policies, including raising interest rates. An aggressive interest rate increase could bring about more softening in the market, particularly in the housing market, if mortgage rates continue to spike up. So what should a potential home buyer do? Well, home buyers are faced with tough choices in today's markets. Predictions indicate that home prices will continue to rise and new home construction will continue to lag behind, putting buyers in tight housing situations for the foreseeable future. For some buyers, that means moving away from big cities into more affordable metros. For others, it means stretching their budget or compromising on size or other amenities. And then there are buyers willing to roll the dice and forgo important contingencies like home inspections in order to sweeten their offer, raising a uh, waiving appraisal contingencies and shortening all kinds of issues that are in the contract. This could end up costing them more in the long run if the house ends up having major problems that haven't been detected and fixed on the seller upon inspections. It's very important that you consult with a professional realtor if you are considering any of these uh, changes to the contract or ex escalation clauses or any other things to try to get the home of your dreams. On the other hand, snagging a house now, even if it means sacrificing other purchases, could mean saving money down the road if home prices and equity continue to rise. There's a chance they could also save by getting a house and locking in a rate before the rates and home prices continue to go up, which is expected. Then again, the opposite can be true when there's a risk that limited supply coupled with rising inflation could get so extreme that it hurts the housing market and prices fall particularly if the economy goes into a recession. If we fail to address shortages in the housing supply, we run the risk of fueling the fires of inflation rather than extinguishing them. The results could be stagflation, a word that most of us haven't even heard in a generation, high inflation and economic recession. This would devastate the housing economy and only exacerbate our current housing supply shortages. If home prices drop suddenly, Buyers could be stuck with underwater mortgages, which means they'll have to stay in the house until the market rebounds or they sell and lose money. While housing experts predict the scenario is very unlikely, still, it should not be ignored. This comes into play when buyers are faced with bidding wars or even overpaying the appraised value of a home. While there are instances where this tactic should be applied, it must be carefully thought out and whether uh, not the home and the neighborhood and the time you plan on spending that house are gonna be worth it in the long run. Another important consideration in this market is how long you plan on staying in the home. People who are buying their forever home have less to fear if the market reverses as they can ride the wave of ups and downs. Buyers who are planning on moving in a few years are in a riskier position if the market plummets. 
This is why it's so important to shop at the outset for a professional realtor and lender who are experienced housing market experts in your market of interest and who you trust to give sound advice. Thank you for watching my monthly real estate market update video. If you're even thinking about making a move here to Southwest Florida, you need to take the first step. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, however you want to get in touch with me. We have so many people calling us to help them and we absolutely love it. I've developed the systems and processes to make this super easy and stress-free and to give you the best experience possible. And remember, I have your back when buying or selling property in Southwest Florida, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.